Okay. Uh, good morning. So uh, for today, we will be discussing about uh, chapter four, which is the tissue level of organization. Okay, so let's start our discussion. So as we have said during our introduction to anatomy, a tissue is a group of cells with similar structure and function plus the extracellular substance surrounding them. Okay, so we all know no, that in a tissue level of organization, okay, these groups of cells are also separated from each other by the extracellular substance in between them. No? If you will look at this illustration of connective tissue, you have large amounts of extracellular substance in between them. In an epithelial tissue, you have a very small amount of extracellular substance holding them. In muscle tissue, konti lang din. In nervous tissue, you also have huge amount of extracellular substance holding them. Okay, That extracellular substance located in between the cells is called the matrix, extracellular matrix. And the study no, related to tissues is called histology. We have four types no, of tissues in the human body, epithelial, connective, muscles, and nervous tissue. We already have said in our introduction that epithelial tissues form covering or lining no, of body cavities, coverings of body surfaces, and lining of hollow cavities of the human body. While connective tissue, okay, it makes up part of every organ in the body because no, its primary function is for support. Okay, it basically forms partly every organ of the body. Muscle tissue, as we have said in our introduction, is the only tissue capable of contraction or shortening. Hence, it makes movement possible in the human body. And lastly, you have your nervous tissue, which is responsible for coordinating and controlling many body activities. We will be discussing the structure of nervous tissues in detail once we go to the nervous system chapter. Okay, so let's start the details of epithelial tissue. So uh, epithelium or epithelial tissue, as we have said earlier, forms the covering of body surfaces. Therefore, it protects no, our body surfaces, both outside and inside the body. Outside the body, our skin is formed by epithelial tissue. Inside the body, most hollow organs, no, like for example, the urinary bladder, Okay, is lined with epithelial tissue on the inside. Not only the urinary bladder, but also the stomach, the intestines, and even our blood vessels, arteries, and veins are lined with epithelial tissues on its wall. Yun nga lang, no? it's a modified epithelial tissue. That's why it's called endothelial tissue. Okay, endothelial tissue. Now, included under the classification of epithelial tissue are the glands in the body, which are your exocrine and endocrine glands. So as you can see, now in the structure of the glands in the body, specifically the exocrine glands, now wherein they form ducts now, from beneath the surface, those ducts are actually formed by 
epithelial tissues also. So therefore, glands are also classified under epithelial tissues. Okay. So what are the characteristics huh, of epithelial tissues? Epithelial tissues are mostly composed of cells. What do you mean by that? No? If you will go back no, to our diagram of the four types of tissues, as you can see, epithelial tissue cells are tightly packed, no? okay? resulting to very little amount of extracellular matrix. Mm. Unlike the connective tissue and also your nervous tissue, you have large amounts of extracellular matrix. Sa epithelial tissue, kaunti lang because the cells are tightly packed. Hence, they are composed mostly of just cells and very little amount of extracellular matrix. Okay? And as we have said earlier, epithelial tissues covers and protects body surfaces. Okay? And uh, epithelial tissues have an exposed surface an exposed surface that we call the free surface. And that exposed surface is not attached. Kaya tinawag na exposed surface or free surface because it is not attached or connected to other tissue types in the body. Because it is exposed, it, it has a free surface. But opposite the free surface, no? O, oh, yung pinakaibabaw niya is the free surface. Yung ilalim niya, ha? yung ilalim niya is called the basal surface. And that basal surface attaches na, to the underlying basement membrane. Okay? Na? So, uh, yung basal surface niya, na, it is attached to an underlying tissue. And most of the time, that underlying tissue is called a basement membrane. Okay? And since the cells are tightly packed in epithelial tissue, it has special cell connections and matrix attachments, meaning no, the cell-to-cell -cell connections and those attachments to the matrix that we will be discussing later in detail okay and also okay most epithelial tissues do not have blood supply hence they are avascular that's the meaning of a vascular they do not have significant no blood supply most of the time sa epithelial tissues the blood supply is only found on the underlying connective tissue, yung nasa ilalim. Pero sa ibabaw, it has no blood supply. And lastly, epithelial tissues are capable of regeneration. Most of the time, no, when epithelial tissues are sloughed off from the surface, it will be replaced no, by new sets of cells. That's what you mean by regeneration. So let us continue. Okay. So what are the functions of epithelial tissues? As we have said earlier, it protects underlying surfaces. Since it covers surfaces no, outside and inside the body, it also acts as a barrier to the underlying tissue. Diba? No, covering she, so therefore it's also a barrier. No? It is a barrier that can sometimes permit passage of certain substances, but also does not allow passage of certain substances. Kaya nga sabi natin, no? it's like, uh, it's like uh, uh, the cell membrane, di ba? when we discussed about the cell membrane, uh, okay? it is selectively permeable, no? which allows passage of certain substances. And uh, in the case of glandular tissue, no, which falls under epithelial tissue, as we have said earlier, okay, these kinds of tissues also function to secrete substances, both exocrine 
and endocrine glands, okay? Functions like that, secreting substances. But there are also epithelial tissues that functions to absorb substances, like, for example, the epithelial lining of our stomach and the small intestine. Huh? Yung lining ng mga yan, eh, they function to absorb the nutrients. No? And the small chemical particles no? from the food that we eat. So basically, no? it is important that, that that cell lining functions significantly for absorption. Okay. So epithelial tissues no? okay? are classified according to the number of layers that they form and also to the shape of the cells that they form. No? Again, the number of layers and the shape of the cells. In terms of the number of layers that they form, okay, epithelial tissues are classified as simple, stratified, pseudostratified, and transitional epithelium, no? which is a special type of epithelium. Huh? When we say simple, it forms a single layer of cells. Nahin muna natin dito ah, sa mga uh, classification according to layer. Huh? When we say simple, it consists only of a single layer of cells. No? And all of those cells are attached to the basement membrane. When we say stratified, which came from the Latin word for layer, uh, strata, it's the Latin word for layer, it consists of two or more layers of cells. No? Okay, but it is only the bottom layer that attached to the basement membrane. So see the difference between, between simple and stratified. Huh? Okay, simple single layer, huh? stratified two or more layers. Now, the third classification according to layers is called pseudostratified. Okay, now it is a special type of simple epithelium. Oh, again, the keyword simple epithelium. So pseudostratified in actuality is simple epithelium, okay? It just looks like no, a stratified no, at first glance because of its appearance. Hence, it is called pseudostratified. Pseudo is false. So therefore, it is false stratified because it consists only no, of one layer of cells. All cells are attached to the basement membrane, as you can see here in the picture. But due to the variations of the shape of the cells, take a look at the variation of the shape of the cells, and the arrangement of the nucleus, wherein the nucleus is not found, no? okay? in the same levels, they are not aligned, no? they appear to be stratified. Hence, they are called pseudo-stratified or false stratified. Okay? Now, uh, as we have said earlier, no, there is another special type of epithelium no, called transitional epithelium. Okay? Transitional epithelium no, okay, are so named transitional because, okay, no, uh, actually, transitional epithelium is made up of stratified. No? Oh, may layer din yan kapag ka transitional. Okay? And uh, those layers no, of epithelium are found mostly in the lining of stretchable organs like for example the urinary bladder when the urinary bladder is empty oh, di ba? empty oh, walang laman okay 
the lining is not stretched or relaxed. Hence, the lining no, is formed by nearly cuboidal cells. For example, this is the lining of the urinary bladder. Okay. They are lined with nearly cuboidal cells okay, when the urinary bladder is relaxed. For example, this is the basement membrane. Yeah. Okay. When the urinary bladder is full, then it becomes stretched. It will be pulled in the opposite directions. So what will happen now to the shape of these cells? It becomes oh, like this. No? It becomes flat because they are being stretched. Hence, they are called transitional because the shape of the cell changes. That's the key word, no? transitional. The change of the cell changes depending on the state no? of the organ. In the urinary bladder, if it is relaxed, then the shape of the cells is cuboidal. But once it is stretched, no? because it is full, okay, the shape of the cells becomes flat and thin. So as a summary, no, according to the number of layers, you have simple, stratified, pseudostratified, and transitional epithelium. Okay. Now, under no, the shape of the cells, uh, under the shape of the cells, okay, okay, epithelial cells can be classified as squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. No? Again, squamous, cuboidal, and columnar. When we say squamous, the cells are flat and Thin. Okay. okay. While cuboidal, the cells are cube like in shape. Cube, para cube talaga. Huh? While when we say columnar, the, the cells are tall and thin. No? Yeah. You know, kapag ka columnar. Okay. No? So, Therefore, huh, okay, in the classification of epithelial tissues, okay, both the shape and the layers of the cells no, are considered no, in order for you to classify it. Actually, in classifying, ang unang consider is the number of layers. And then no, it is followed by the shape of the cell. That is the reason why for every classification, you will always find okay, the number of layers and the shape of the cell. Uh, example, the first classification okay, no, you know, here in table 4.2 is simple squamous epithelium. So when you say simple squamous epithelium, Simple meaning one layer of squamous, flat, and thin cells. Just, just like what you can see in the picture. No? Single layer of flat and thin cells. So if you will look at the structure, it is a single layer of flat, often hexagonal, meaning yung shape niya. No? Okay? And then the nucleus appear as bumps when viewed in a cross section because the cells are flat. It's like what you see in this diagram. And because these are just flat and thin cells, they function basically for diffusion, no? filtration, while some are for secretion, and while some are for protection against friction, okay? And they are usually found 
in the lining of our blood vessels, like in the lining of the arteries and veins. Okay? No? Kaya lang, no? in the lining of our arteries and veins, okay, a special term is used. Instead of epithelium, they are termed as endothelium. Endo kasi means inside. Since they are located inside the blood vessels, then they are more correctly termed as endothelium. Okay? But in terms of structure, oh, epithelium pa rin yan. Ha? So do not be confused no? when you read other references in anatomy and physiology where in the epithelial lining of our blood vessels is termed as endothelium. Ha? Pareho lang yun. Uh, they are also found in the heart, in the, in the lymphatic vessels, in the alveoli of the lungs, in portions of kidney tubules. Because our kidney tubules, no, yung uh, small two tubes of the kidney, uh, are lined with, there are portions lined with simple squamous epithelium, while there are also portions lined with simple cuboidal epithelium, as you will see later. Huh? Uh, so that is your simple squamous epithelium. Again, you only have a single layer of flat and thin cells no, attached to your basement membrane. Now, the second is your simple cuboidal epithelium. Oh. Kita nyo dito, no? Okay? So, first, no, simple. Oh, yun ang unang kinonsider, the number of layers that they form. And then, second is the shape of the cell. Simple cuboidal epithelium is made up of a single layer of cube-like cells. Single, simple, no? And then, cube-like, cuboidal. Okay? Just like what you see in the picture. Okay? And as I have said earlier, okay, these kinds of epithelium are seen in our kidney tubules. And what did we say earlier? Kidney tubules no, are small tubes of the kidneys. There are portions lined with simple squamous, as we have said earlier, while there are portions lined with simple cuboidal epithelium. Oh, just like here. Now, okay, their functions in the kidneys is more of secretion, no? more of secretion and absorption. Okay? No? While uh, uh, in our glands, no? they are more of secretion. Okay? So, again, again, they are located in our kidney tubules and in the glands in their respective ducts. Okay? Again, simple cuboidal epithelium. Now, the third classification no, under simple epithelium is simple columnar epithelium. Oh, when you say simple columnar epithelium, it is single layer pa rin simple eh. No? But this time, tall and narrow cells. Hence, no? they are classified as columnar because they are like columns. No? Patayo eh. Ha? Okay? No. And uh, they are found in the bronchioles of the lungs, in our auditory tubes, in the uterine tubes of the females, no? and in the uterus. Okay? So, what distinguishes your simple columnar epithelium from other cell types, from other tissue types, is the presence of goblet cells containing mucus. That is why most of the time, organs that are lined with simple columnar epithelium possess mucus on their free surface. May mucus sila sa ibabaw. May mucus yan sa free surface. Okay? Ah, that's why, if you will look at the 
respiratory passages, like for example, in the bronchioles of the lungs, there is a small amount no, of mucus on the surface. Okay, no? it's because of the presence of those goblet cells. Okay, and another no, surface modification no, of columnar epithelium, yan, isa pang unique sa columnar epithelium, is that meron silang surface modification. Okay, most columnar epithelium are ciliated. Oh, what do you mean by ciliated? Meaning the free surface possess cilia. Okay, oh, what is a cilia? Cilia is a hair-like projection that is found on the free surface no? of most columnar cells. Although dito sa illustration, hindi masyadong kita. No? Ayan, I will try to draw the drawing. Ko. So, for example, this is your columnar epithelium. Ayan, ayan columnar epithelium. No? Okay. Ayan. And these are the... Uh, Nucleus, for example, oh, yare yeah, yeah, nucleus, no? and this is the basement membrane, for example. Okay, and for example, these are your goblet cells. Oh, yare yeah, 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 na goblet cells yan. Okay. Oh, on the surface, you have tiny hair-like projections. Okay, no. Most columnar epithelium have tiny hair-like projections, which we call cilia. Now, that's why most columnar epithelium are ciliated. And what is the function of that cilia? Function of that cilia is to act like a conveyor belt. No? Parang conveyor yan. When they produce motion, no? they move whatever particles are found on the surface. They move that like a conveyor, just like no, what you see in the conveyor uh, belt, no, in the in the airport, no, wherein the baggages are being moved, no. Okay, parang ganun din ang cilia. So what does the cilia move? The cilia practically moves the mucus, no, on the surface as it is produced by uh, the goblet cells. So the main purpose of that movement is so that mucus does not accumulate in the surface. Like, for example, in the bronchioles of the lungs, its main purpose is to move the mucus in our upper respiratory passages from the lungs until it reaches no, the trachea, no, the throat, hanggang makarating sa nasal cavity so that we can remove it through sneezing or coughing. Okay? So that is the difference. So that is the feature of your simple columnar epithelium. So again, single layer of tall, thin, and narrow cells. Hmm? Okay. The last or... Uh, uh, the next one is your pseudostratified columnar epithelium. As we have said earlier, no? pseudo, no? meaning false, no? stratified, pseudostratified, meaning false stratified epithelium. And you already know the reason earlier. Huh? Pseudostratified epithelium consists of single layer of cells in actuality. And since some cells are tall and thin and reach the free surface, and some cells do not, there are cells that reach the free surface. Okay. And while there are cells that do not reach the free surface, hanggang dun lang siya. So, itsura tuloy nila. No? At, a at first glance, no? You have two or more layers, but in actuality, you only have one layer. So therefore, no? No? it is classified as pseudo-stratified. 
And since the shape of the cells are also columnar, di ba? Okay? The common denominator between uh, simple columna and pseudostratified columnar epithelium is the presence of goblet cells. Oh, may goblet cells din yan. And therefore, no, the free surface also is covered with mucus. And just like in simple columnar epithelium, the free surface is also lined with hair-like projections called cilia, which functions mainly to move no, the mucus on the surface, preventing the humiliation no, of mucus on the surface. Again, that is your pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Okay, so uh, next, oh, let's go to stratified. Oh, puro ano pa lang yan, no? Puro simple pa lang yung na-discuss natin. Simple squamous, simple cuboidal, simple columnar, and pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Technically, it falls under simple because it's actually simple. It just appears to be stratified. Hence, it's called pseudo-stratified. So let's go to the next classification. You have your stratified epithelium. Okay. Now, the first type of stratified epithelium is your stratified squamous epithelium. Stratified squamous epithelium is composed of several layers of cells. Stratified. No? Okay. Eh, di ba po? Pag squamous, no? flat and thin cells. Okay. So, stratified squamous epithelium, no? yung squamous is found only on the top layer of cells. Meaning, the top layer of cells, no? okay, are flat and thin. While the bottom layers are cuboidal in shape. Okay? Because, no, itong stratified squamous epithelium, no, these cuboidal cells are the, at the bottom, no, are progressively flattened as they proceed towards the surface. Oh, uh, meron palang continuous movement of the epithelial cells from the bottom towards the surface. So they start at the bottom, okay, cuboidal in shape, and then they are progressively pushed upward where they are compressed no, to form flat and thin cells. Okay? And the stratified squamous epithelium can be classified as non-keratinized or keratinized. Okay? Non-keratinized epithelium are most of the time moist, usually found in our cornea, in the mucous membrane of the mouth, and also in our esophagus. Oh. Diba? All of those epithelia are moist, hence they are classified as keratinized. Na? Okay? So, ibig sabihin, na, a non-keratinized rather, na? non-keratinized. In a non-keratinized, okay, the surface cells retain the nucleus and the cytoplasm, meaning the cells no, are still viable, healthy, and living. Eh, may nucleus eh. Huh? Up to the top layer of cells. No? While in keratinized stratified epithelium, no, the top layer of cells no, on the surface are being replaced with a protein called keratin, hence it is called keratinized, and the cells are dead on that superficial surface. And a very good example of keratinized epithelium is our skin. No? So yung skin natin, the superficial layer is made up of keratin, which is made up of protein, no? okay? called keratin and made up of flat and dead cells. So what is the function of stratified 
epithelium, stratified squamous to be exact, since you have no, many layers no, of cells, it protects basically surfaces against abrasion, okay? And also forms barrier against infection and reduces loss of water from the body. Oh, I guess it, right? No, especially the skin, which is keratinized. The keratin also provides a waterproofing property for our body, hence prevents the absorption of water through the skin. Okay? Oh, kaya kita nyo, yung uh, outer layer of our skin is keratinized, while no, the non-keratinized classifications are found in the mouth, the throat, the larynx, the esophagus, the anus, the vaginal canal, the inferior urethra, and even our cornea. It's like what you see here in the illustration. So stratified squamous. Yan. Now, when we say transitional epithelium, as we have said earlier, transitional epithelium is composed of stratified epithelium, where in most of the cells no, in those layers are cuboidal to columnar. Huh? Okay. Now, they appear to be cuboidal and columnar only when the organ that they line, for example, the urinary bladder, is full and stretched. But when the organ that they line is uh, uh, empty pala, empty and empty and relaxed. No? Kapag, ka, kapag ka, uh, ang urinary bladder is empty and relaxed, the lining is cuboidal. But when the urinary bladder is full and stretched, then therefore, no, okay, the shape of the cells changes into flat and thin in order for the, the, the urinary bladder to accommodate fluctuations, volume of fluid, for example, the volume of urine. Diba? So, yun ang function. Transitional. The key word there is change. No? It changes from one shape to another depending to when the cell is stretched or when the organ is stretched or when the organ is relaxed. Okay, so we have just finished epithelial tissue. No? And as a summary, uh, the functions of epithelial tissues, again, number one is to protect underlying structures, acts as a barrier, permits passage of substances, and secreting of substances, and absorption of substances. Okay? Now, so let's go to the next type of tissues. You have your connective tissues, okay? So connective tissue is a diverse primary tissue type that makes up part of every organ in the body. Connective tissues differ from other three tissue types because it consists of cells separated from each other by abundant extracellular matrix. As you can see here, no? okay, this is a microscopic diagram of cartilage. And a cartilage is under connective tissue type. As you can see, no? these are the cells. Okay? And they are separated from each other by an abundant extracellular matrix. Okay? Therefore, no, if in epithelial tissue we look at the characteristics of cells no, in order to classify, diba? tining na natin yung layers and tining na natin yung shape of the cells. Oh, that's why we came up with simple columnar, simple cuboidal. Diba? We are looking at the shape of the cells. 
nung kinlasify natin and also the layers. Here in connective tissue, since they have an abundant amount of extracellular matrix, no, we look at the characteristics of the extracellular matrix to be able to classify them. And what is the composition of the extracellular matrix in connective tissues? They are comprised of protein fibers. And yun na nga, no? yung kanyang extracellular matrix. And what are the functions of connective tissue? Huh? They enclose and separate other tissues. They connect tissues to one another. They support no? okay, and move parts of the body. They are also, no? uh, they also function no? in storing compounds. Okay? They are also important in cushioning and insulating the body in the transportation of certain substances and also for protection of our organs. Huh? Oh. Now, the extracellular matrix has three major components. This is what I'm telling you about. Huh? Ano nga bang laman ng extracellular matrix ng connective tissue? It is made up mainly of protein fibers. It's ground substance and mostly fluid. And when we say ground substance, they're also made up of protein. But these are non-fibrous protein and com composed of usually large molecules, what we call the macromolecules. Huh? And the, 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 the structure of the matrix is responsible for the functional characteristics of the connective tissue. That is why, no? In connective tissue, we describe them according to the structure of the matrix. Unlike doon sa epithelial tissue, we describe them according to the structure of the cells. O dito, ha? we will classify them and we will describe them according to the characteristics and structure of the extracellular matrix. Now, in terms of protein fibers found in the extracellular matrix, you will find three protein fibers, no? which helps form most connective tissues. You have collagen, uh, collagen, reticular fibers, and elastic fibers. Huh? Collagen are like microscopic ropes, which is responsible for the structural strength of most connective tissue. And since they are like ropes, they are very flexible. They magano naman ang mga ropes, but at the same time, they can resist stretching. Huh? While reticular fibers are very fine, no? Okay? Very fine, short collagen fibers. So, ibig sabihin, reticular fibers are also collagen. No, but they are not like rope, but rather they form branching no? so that they can form a supporting network. And lastly, you have your elastic fibers. Huh? Elastic because they are elastic, meaning no? even if they are compressed or stretched, they have the ability to return their original shape, no? giving the tissue an elastic quality. So example is a tissue that makes up the aorta and most blood vessels in the body. Most blood vessels in the body, like the aorta, is highly stretchable because of the elastic fibers found. No? Okay, the tendons no, of our muscles, they are also stretchable because huh, they contain elastic fibers. Now, as we have said earlier, no, okay, when we say ground substance, these are 
non-fibrous proteins or non-fibrous molecules, and therefore they are shapeless. And these molecules are most of the time large molecules or macromolecules that we call proteoglycans. Uh, they are macromolecules or large molecules because their protein core is attached to many long polysaccharides. Huh? And uh, most of the time, no, proteoglycans are water loving or hydrophilic. So therefore, they trap large quantities of water between the polysaccharides. So therefore, it also allows them to return to their original shape when compressed or deformed. So that is the most that is mostly the composition of the matrix, no? specifically the ground substance. Now, connective tissues are classified as connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissue and fluid connective tissue. Huh? Uh, when we say uh, connective tissue proper, uh, connective tissue proper, okay, uh, these are classified as either loose or dense. Okay, dito muna tayo sa connective tissue proper. Huh? They are classified as loose or dense depending on the arrangement of the fibers and the amount of ground substance present. Loose connective tissue have fewer fibers, hence they are loose, no? and they have more ground substance. Dense connective tissues okay, no? have more fibers, hence they are dense, but they have less ground substance. So unahin natin yung loose. Oh, under loose, you have areolar, adipose, and reticular tissue. Under areolar tissue or areolar connective tissue, you have a fine network of fibers, no? which is mostly collagen, no? with a few elastic fibers where this is the keyword spaces in between the fibers in between the fibroblasts the macrophages and lymphocytes no? located in those spaces oh kaya siya classified under loose connective tissue and in some anatomy books no the complete name is loose areolar connective tissue it's because of those spaces in between the fibers. Okay? No? So therefore, they are loose packing. Uh, hence, loose areolar tissue. Okay? No. So they are usually found widely distributed all throughout the body. Huh? Okay? And uh, they are usually packing in between glands, no? muscles, and nerves, and also you will find this attaches the skin, our skin, to the underlying tissue. So that is your loose areolar connective tissue. Now the second type of loose connective tissue is your adipose tissue. Huh? Adipose, okay? And as you can see in the picture, in the photomicrogram, you have very little extracellular matrix surrounding the cells. Okay? And these are made up of adipocytes or simply fat cells that are so full of lipids. So, oh, yung makita nyo nga sa loob ng adipocytes. These are actually lipids. Okay? No? And because of their content of lipids in their cytoplasm, they tend to push. No? Okay, yung, uh, uh, anong tawag doon? Uh, the contents of the cytoplasm on the periphery of the cell. Ayun siya. Yung contents of cytoplasm napupunta sa gilid. Kasi yung loob niya napupuno ng lipids or taba. 
And what is the function? They are also packing materials. They are thermal insulators, energy storage, and protection of the organs against injury from being bumped or jarred. It cushions no? most vital organs from being bumped or jarred. Hence, no? the mammary gland are enclosed within no? or enveloped within adipose tissue. Okay? No. And then the third type is your reticular tissue. Uh, okay, it's called reticular tissue because it is made up mainly of a loose tissue that we call reticular fibers. It's a fine network of reticular fibers irregularly arranged. Okay, and it forms a superstructure for lymphatic and hematopoietic tissues. Oh, when you say lymphatic tissues, it's your lymph nodes. No? Hematopoietic tissue, it's your spleen. Oh, it's made up of reticular tissue. Okay? So we have just finished no? yung loose connective tissue. And as a summary, it's considered loose because they contain fewer fibers, but more on ground substance. Under loose connective tissue, you have areola adipose, and reticular connective tissue. Now let us go to the dense. Oh, as we have said earlier, dense connective tissue have more fibers, but less ground substance. And most of the time, they are classified according to the arrangement of the fibers. Hence, makikita nyo, may nakalagay regular at irregular, ibig sabihin, it has something to do with the arrangement of the fibers. And also, okay, it is also classified according to the predominant type of fiber present or protein fiber present. If it is collagen, then collagenous. If it is elastic fibers, then it is elastic. Hence, you have dense regular collagenous, dense irregular collagenous, diba? dense regular, dense regular elastic, and dense irregular elastic. Let's take a look at that. So this is your dense regular collagenous connective tissue. Huh? And if you will look at the arrangement of the collagen fibers, as you can see in the picture, they run parallel to each other. That's why they are classified as regular connective tissue. And you, if you will compare na, it to loose connective tissue, oh, dito, the fibers are tightly packed or compact. So therefore, they are classified as dense connective tissue. Na? They run in the same direction. The collagen fibers run in the same direction. Okay, And these are found in our ligaments and in our tendons. And because of that, they can withstand great pulling forces exerted in the direction of the fiber orientation. So therefore, no? okay, uh, they have great tensile strength no? and stretch resistance. Okay. Then you have your dense regular elastic number. Oh. When you say dense regular elastic no? connective tissue, huh? they are found or, or they are composed mainly of elastin. Oh. But just like your dense regular collagenous, the fibers also run parallel to each other. I classify as regular. Huh? Okay. So ito. Since they are elastic, they are capable of stretching and recoiling like a rubber band with strength in the direction of the fiber orientation. And these are found in elastic ligaments. For example, no, that ligament found in our vertebrae, okay, specifically on the dorsal aspect of the neck. These are also found in our vocal cords. No? 
and the elastic connective tissues of our blood vessel walls. Oh, that is why I told you earlier, di ba? Yung ating aorta in most uh, large blood vessels no, are elastic, meaning after being stretched, they can recoil to their original shape. So we have just finished no, yung connective tissues. Yan, no? Or rather, uh, connective tissue proper. Oh, natapos na natin to. So let us now go to the next subclassification, which is yung supporting connective tissue. Under supporting connective tissue, you have your cartilage and your bone tissue. Okay? Cartilage tissue uh, has a semi-solid matrix, while bone tissue is composed of a solid and hard matrix. So let us first discuss yung cartilage. Okay? Na? So cartilage is composed of chondrocytes. So that's how we call the cells of our cartilage tissues. Chondrocytes. Chondro means cartilage. No? Cytes means cells. It's located in spaces called lacunae within an extensive matrix. Huh? Okay? So, ang, uh, for example, uh, this is the field of the microscope. Yan yung field ng microscope. Pag sinilip mo ang cartilage no? under the microscope, you will find no, uh, small spaces scattered within the matrix. And these small spaces are called lacunae. No? And inside those lacunae no, are the chondrocytes. Ayan. Nandoon sa loob yung chondrocytes. Ayan ang nucleus nila. Ayan. So, ayan. They are located inside. Okay? Ganon ang itsura kapag ka cartilage. Now, the collagen in the matrix, meaning yan, ito yan, ito yung matrix, gives the cartilage flexibility and strength. And cartilage is resilient because of the proteoglycans of the matrix no, that trap water. Oh, it, ibig sabihin, no, it is rich in proteoglycans. Eh, di ba? We have said earlier, proteoglycans are hydrophilic, meaning they trap water. Therefore, no, kaya nga makikita natin kanina, no, in the description, ang cartilage tissue oops, oh, is, has a semi-solid matrix. Because the proteoglycans in the matrix tends to trap water. Okay? No? And cartilage provides support. But if bent or slightly compressed, no? it resumes to its original shape. Because again, it is flexible and resilient. And there are three types of cartilage in the body. You have your hyaline, fibrocartilage, and elastic. Cartilage. The most abundant type of cartilage in the body is hyaline. Ayan, pinakamarami mong makikita sa human body because no, it covers the ends of most bones in the body where they form joints. So therefore, hyaline cartilage are usually found no, within our joints. They also form the cartilaginous rings of our respiratory tract. The trachea, the bronchi, no? okay, uh, is formed by cartilaginous rings. Even the cartilages of our nose, the nasal cartilages, and the cartilage of our ribs, no? which attach the ribs to our sternum, are all hyaline cartilages. So this is how the hyaline cartilage appear no, under the microscope. No? Okay? So, yung uh, dark, uh, yung mga purple na yan, no, in, on the surrounding, is the matrix. And those highlight, no, yung mga darker purples, uh, represents the lacunae. No? O yung cavity ng lacunae, yung white. And inside those lacunae, you will find the chondro 
sites. Okay? So as you can see in hyaline cartilage, no, the collagen fibers are small and evenly dispersed in the matrix. Hence, it makes the matrix no, appear transparent. Okay? And as we have said earlier, no, the chondrocytes are found inside those spaces called lacunae. And what is the function of hyaline cartilage? Okay? Hyaline cartilage, especially on long bones, no, is being turned over to bone tissue. So therefore, it allows the growth of our long bones. While in the trachea, it provides rigidity with some flexibility. No, just like in our bronchi, in our ribs, and in our nose. No? It also provides strong, smooth, yet somewhat flexible articulating surfaces in our joints, just like what you see in the picture. Or just imagine, if our bones are not covered with hyaline cartilage. Right? So therefore, no, when we jump or when we run, the jarring impact no, oh, of our weight no, and gravity to our joint will be too excessive. So therefore, itong mga articular cartilage na to, joint cartilage na to, functions for shock absorption. No? Pag tayo naglalakad, tumatakbo, tumatalo. Okay? No? So that is your hyaline cartilage. Now the second type of cartilage is your fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage, no? are are uh, uh, rich no or they have abundant collagen fibers okay uh, okay they have collagen fibers similar to those that are found in hyaline cartilage pero the difference is that these hyaline fibers are more numerous no and they are arranged in thick bundles that is why if you look at it under the microscope you will find the collagen fibers arranged in thick bundles. Yan, yung mga kulay blue na yan. And you will still find those chondrocytes inside the lacunae. Pero mas marami, mas malalaki yung collagen fibers. Kaya kitang kita siya. Ha? And because of that, they are capable of withstanding considerable pressure. Oh. Diba? That's why they are found inside our, or they are found in our intervertebral discs, which are always subjected to compression. Diba? Then next, you have your elastic cartilage. Elastic cartilage are also similar to hyaline cartilage, but no, the matrix contains more elastic fibers, just like what you see in the picture. No? It can provide rigidity, but it has greater flexibility no? than the hyaline cartilage because, again, of a greater amount of elastic fibers. Okay? So, therefore, tissues or organs that are composed of elastic cartilage are able to return to their original shape after being stretched. Huh? They are found in the external ears, in our epiglottis, and in our auditory tubes. So those are the three types no, of cartilage in the body. Now let's go to bone tissue. Oh, okay. Now, the main difference between cartilage and bone tissue is that a bone tissue is composed or made up of a mineralized matrix. Huh? If in your cartilage, huh, the uh, matrix is made up of proteoglycans and collagen fibers, making it semi-solid, huh? the bone is made up of mineralized matrix, making it no, a solid matrix, hard solid matrix. Okay, and within that matrix, the osteocytes, meaning the bone cells, are also located within a 
la kunay. The strength and rigidity of the mineralized matrix enables bones to support and protect other tissues and organs. And we have two types of bone tissues, the spongy and compact bone tissues. As you can see here in the picture, no? spongy bone tissues have significant spaces within a trabecular network. Oh, may mga spaces. Let me enlarge this. Okay, spongy bone tissue have spaces no? in between, just like a sponge, while compact bone tissue, okay, is compact, no? as the name implies. It does not have any spaces. It does not have any trabecular no? network. Okay, no, and uh, bone tissues are hard. Ah, by the way, no, just like in uh, cartilage tissue, okay, yung ating bone tissues possess small spaces which contains osteocytes, the bone cells. And those small spaces are also called lacunae. No? And as you can see, the matrix of a compact bone tissue are arranged in concentric layers of rings. Uh, concentric layers of rings organized into, you know, again, concentric layers of rings that we call lamellae. And in the center of each of those lamellae is a canal known as the central canal. And most of the time, or no, it contains a microscopic blood vessel known as the uh, uh, nutrient artery. No? So, microscopic yan, ha? No? it's not visible with the naked eye. It can be, it can only be seen under the microscope. Ha? So, that is your bone tissue. And we will discuss more of that pagdating natin sa skeletal system. Okay? Then you have blood, no? under connective tissue, ang blood, and it is considered a liquid connective tissue because it contains a liquid matrix that we call our plasma. Oh, diba the liquid portion of our blood is plasma, and suspended in the plasma are the formed elements of the blood, such as the red blood cells, or the erythrocytes, the white blood cells, or the leukocytes, and your platelets. And basically, it functions for the transport of food, oxygen, wastes, and hormones, and other substances in the body. And we will discuss the details of our blood when we go to the circulatory system. Okay? No? So, when you look at your blood, no, your blood smear, again, under the microscope, you will see the formed elements of the blood suspended in our plasma or the fluid matrix. In itsura niyan, pag sinilip mo under the microscope. Okay? So we have just finished no, yung, uh, Connective tissue. So as a summary, under connective tissue, yan, you have your, tanggalin ko muna para makita nyo. Purahin muna natin lahat ng sulat. Yan. No? So you have your connective tissue proper, supporting connective tissue, and fluid connective tissue. Under Connective tissue proper, you have loose and dense. Under supporting connective tissue, you have cartilage and bone. And the only fluid connective tissue in the body is our blood. So let us now go to yeah, muscle tissue. Huh? 
So the main function of muscle tissue is to contract or to shorten making movements possible. Uh, because of the contraction, the shortening action of our muscles, no? we are able to move our body. Okay? And we have three types of muscle tissue in the body. You have your skeletal, parja, and smooth muscle. Okay? So as you can see, no? skeletal muscle cells no? are elongated or cylindrical in shape. Pahaba siya. Hence, they are described as muscle fibers. Okay? And when you look at it under the microscope, no? they appear striated or banded. Okay? They appear striated or banded. No? In fact, among the three types of muscles in the body, yung, uh, uh, anong tawag dito? Uh, skeletal, parja, and smooth muscles. Dalawa dyan talaga, striated or banded. And that is your skeletal and parja. The smooth muscles are not striated, hence they are described as smooth. They are classified as smooth. So going back to the microscopic appearance of skeletal muscles, you will find visible striations when you look at it under the microscope. Um, you will find out when we go to the when we go to ma uh, our discussion of the muscular system why they appear striated or banded under the microscope, and they are classified skeletal muscles because they attach to our bones and to our connective tissue. They are attached to the skeleton, and their main function is for movement of the body. And skeletal muscles are under voluntary control, meaning uh, we move our muscles at our own will. No? Uh, pag gusto mong gumalaw, gagalaw ka. Pag ayaw mo, hindi. Okay? At your own will. Now, the second type of muscle tissue in the body is your cardiac muscle. And as you can see, just like your skeletal muscle, when you look at it under the microscope, you also find visible striations or banding on its surface. So therefore, it is also striated. Now, if your skeletal muscles are elongated, hence they are called muscle fibers, okay? Cardiac muscles are branching. They branch out. Okay? No? And they are interconnected to each other by a special cell-to-cell -cell junctions that we call intercalated discs. Huh? Skeletal muscles do not have intercalated discs. Huh? And since they are found in the heart, their main function is for pumping of our blood. And they are under involuntary control. Meaning, no, you cannot control it at your own will. You cannot make your heart stop, just uh, stop from beating, no? Or if you wish it, no. Oh, it's under involuntary control. Then the last type is your smooth muscle. And as you can see, when you look at it under the microscope, uh, smooth muscles do not have visible striations. Hence, they are smooth, okay? And if you will look at the shape of the cells, the cells have tapered ends. Maganyan na shape ng mga cells. Okay? No? Spindle shaped. Kumbaga. Ha? Ang shape ng smooth muscle cells. And they function mainly to regulate the size of the organs. They force fluid through the tubes no? in our body. No? Okay? In the case of our eye, no? okay, uh, specifically in uh, our pupil, uh, they control the amount of light entering the eye. So therefore, they are found in hollow organs, such as the stomach, the intestine, uh, and in our eyes. So that's your smooth muscle. So as a summary, uh, you have three types of 
muscle tissues in the body, uh, you have skeleton, cardia, and smooth muscles. Okay. And lastly, you have your nervous tissue. The tissue that forms the brain, the spinal cord, and the nerves. Okay. And the nervous system is responsible for coordinating and controlling many body activities. Okay. And in the nervous system, you will find two types of nervous tissue. No? Okay. You have the neurons and you also have your glial cells. Okay. Ah? And what we will be discussing here in the nervous tissue, we describe muna natin, are the neurons. No? Yung glial cells, we will reserve it for our discussion of the nervous system. It is because the neuron is responsible for conducting the impulses or electrical signals in our nervous system. Huh? And uh, the neuron is composed of three main parts, cell body, dendrite, and then axon. Just like what you see in the picture, huh? you have here the cell body, the dendrites, and the axon. Okay? Oh, yung mga neurons na yan are found in the brain, spinal cord, and the ganglia. And we will discuss the details of that when we go to the nervous system in our future classes. Okay? And that ends our topics in issue. Okay? Thank you.